Rachel. Please, Paul! Paul! Oh, Paul, help me! Oh, please, Paul, help me! Rachel! Square. Cross. Circle. Music. Stanton, I'm Dr. Lucas Darrow. Thank you. How are you, Lucas? Fine, fine, fine. It seems I was in a graveyard. And then, oh, I can't remember everything. And so, after it happened, I uh, began to see uh, faces. Ug ugly faces. I hear voices telling me that I'm responsible for my husband's death. I I'm sorry, Dr. Mrs. Stanton, the unknown has frightened people since the beginning of time. 
The only cure is understanding. Oh, Doctor, I'm trying to understand. Can't you see that? I really am trying to understand. That's why when Dr. Tyler said that he had known you in medical school, I insisted he bring you here. Simon? Anything neurological has been ruled out, Lucas. But before Mr. Stanton will agree to undergo psychoanalysis with me, he insists that any possibility of psychic phenomena also be ruled out, along with anything organic. Her husband was dabbling in psychic matters when he was killed. Mrs. Stanton, do you believe in extrasensory perception? If you mean the metaphysical or the supernatural or whatever it is you do here, no, I don't. But I have to make absolutely sure that it isn't anything like that. Mrs. Stanton, let me tell you what we do here and why I have reason to believe in ESP and how I know it does exist. Research in parapsychology began at Duke University and is now being conducted all over the world. We have thousands upon thousands of computerized case histories involving ESP. And in tests here at the university, every day, people are giving us detailed images with an accuracy that goes far beyond chance or coincidence. Images revealed through mental means alone. Telepathy. But I don't have any of those powers. All of these things just started happening to me. Sometimes people under great stress or emotional shock become hyper-receptive. How can you be so sure? Have you ever had any of these experiences yourself? Yes, Mrs. Stanton, I have. Can you finish for me? Yes, but... Then do it. Just do it. Gary Jump would have died that night from an accidental overdose of medication, but a telepathic cry for help saved his life and changed mine. I literally left the operating room to explore the farthest reaches of man's mind. Carrie is now my assistant. Since he lost his sight, his sixth sense has become so highly developed that I sometimes wonder if I have a private thought anymore. It was kind of hit and miss at first, until Dr. Darrow helped me channel it. I'm still not convinced, Doctor. But as I told Dr. Tyler, I have to be absolutely sure. Will you help me? I'll try. The truth of what happened that night is in your unconscious, Rachel. Under hypnosis, you will tell us the truth. All right? Yes. Now, just listen to my voice. Your whole body is beginning to relax. Close your eyes. Limp and relaxed. Your arms and legs are heavy. They seem to be melting. Your whole body is like wax. Running. Running. Relaxed. You are going to sleep. Sleep. Deep, sweet. Deep sleep. You are now sleep, sound asleep.
What is it, Rachel? Tell me, what do you see? Tell me, Rachel, what do you see? I saw Rachel in the window. I really did. She was calling to me. Running through a graveyard. Simon, it was calling to me. Using my name, compelling me towards that window. I couldn't stop myself. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have gone out that window just like her husband. You didn't see anything? Nothing. I did. You saw it, Carrie? It was like I did in my mind, a, a dream. A woman dressed in black. Yes, she was wearing a black dress. What else, Carrie? What else did you notice about her? Size, hair color, anything? It's vague. Reddish-brown hair. She was crying. Running through a graveyard. That's exactly right. What the hell have we got here? Fraud. Trickery of some kind. Why do you trick someone who can't see? He has fallen, Rachel. Your husband has fallen. Rachel, the phone. You hear the phone, Rachel. You hear the phone. Answer it. Now. Answer the phone, Rachel. who it is now. No. The voice is becoming louder, clearer, every word distinct. Yes. Have you heard the voice before? Yes. Yes. Whose voice is it, Rachel? I'm not sure. Tell me her name. It's... Oh, Carson, I... Come Rachel. You can hear her voice clearly now. Who is... I like Who? Raven Dog Coffin. I like Raven Dog Coffin. No! My cousin... Nora Piper! Nora Piper! Nora Piper!
plumbing, Rachel. You're the one with the big house, Bill. It doesn't belong to me. Well, I'm sure you can arrange that. Sure, the way you did. Oh, Nora. This is Dr. Lucas Darrow. Oh, you shrink. I heard you were going to one. I'm not a psychiatrist, Miss Piper, but I would like to ask you a few questions. About what? There are some things about the death of Mrs. Stanton's husband. Well, now, what I can I tell you that she hasn't? Do you know anything about ESP? Extra I know what it perception. means. Someone was playing ESP games with Paul the night of his death. I don't play games with married men, Luke. I would like to know if you talked to Paul Stanton the night he was killed. I was way out on the bay in this boat. It doesn't have a phone now. Rachel it seems hard tells to like me that, that I... you were in love with Paul. That's right. And Paul loved me. And he didn't realize it until after he married her. When are you going to stop hiding from the truth? He loved me. The only reason he stayed married to you was because he knew how much a divorce would cost him. And more than anything, Paul loved his money best. But he didn't love Rachel. He loved me. You want to know who killed Paul? Well, I'll tell you. It was her. She killed him. You killed him, Rachel, because you couldn't stand knowing that he loved me. You couldn't stand it, and you killed him. No, I always him. did. He always did. It was I never used to that. Rachel. It was never you. It was always I, me. She took him, and she pushed him out that no, window. I did. You killed him, Rachel. He loved oh, me more than anybody in the world. You killed him. You killed him. You killed him because he loved me. You killed him. You killed him. Rachel. Maybe she's right. Maybe I did do it. Maybe stop what it, I saw, I saw it. in my mind. I saw what you saw. But you didn't see it on the night it happened to Paul. I could have done it. I could have done it. I'm taking you home, Rachel, and I want you to take a sedative and get into bed. Nora couldn't have made that telephone call if she was out on the boat. You seem so sure the voice was hers. Is it possible that someone else sounded like her? Her mother. Huh? Yeah? Let's try the back, Carrie. Awakened in sunlight in a better world. <sighs> Mrs. Piper? <sighs> what are you doing here? We've come here to talk about. How long have you been here? <sighs> Who are you? What right have you? Have you... I'm a scientist at the university, Mrs. Piper, Dr. Lucas Darrow. This is my assistant, Carrie Johnson, and we know a little something about what you were doing. What I do is nobody's business. I believe that people can talk to the dead, but I do not exploit it. If you have such a power as this, Mrs. Piper, why keep it a secret? Death is simply passing from one room into another. I see the dead in the other room as you see the living on the street. You've come about my daughter, Nora. Not entirely. I've already talked to her. Probably more than I have recently. Come in. <laughs> She's a... Uh... On her own now. Oh, it's funny how they change. Your niece, Rachel Stanton, Mrs. Piper, she's not well. Rachel isn't well? Well, I don't wonder after, after the way that her husband died. I'll call her in the morning. 
When was the last time you talked to Paul? Oh. A week or so before he died. I, I, I telephoned Rachel, and he answered. Oh, Rachel and I were very close. Even though we weren't on the same social level since her marriage. You didn't talk to Paul Stanton on the telephone the night of his death? Talked to him on the telephone? No. If a call was placed from this house, Mrs. Piper, the police can easily check the unit calls recorded by the telephone company. Very well, Doctor. There's no point in bringing the police into this. You're quite right. I was playing ESP games with Paul, and I telephoned the house that night to see if I had received his sentence correctly. Did Rachel know this was going on? Doctor, my interest in psychic matters is nobody's business. And if my daughter hadn't told Paul, he wouldn't know anything about it. That's all there was to it. I don't think that's all there is to it, Mrs. Piper. I think there's much more you're not telling us. I had nothing to do with Paul Stanton's death. Paul Stanton was the only person who appreciated my gift, and I loved him for that. It didn't stop with Paul. Rachel has been the victim of constant psychic harassment, and I was almost killed last night. Now, I'm going to find out how this happened and why. Doctor, there are forces at work beneath the surface of everyday life which, which are beyond your ability to understand or, or to control. I'm well aware of that, Mrs. Piper. Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. That's truer in psychic matters than anywhere else. And that, Mrs. Piper, is the wrong thing to say to a scientist. my supper. It's on the stove. What do you think, Lucas? You're the psychic. Why don't you tell me? You said you thought there was more she wasn't telling. Oh, that wasn't ESP. That was pure gut instinct. She's covering up something. Well, why are you speeding up, Lucas? What's wrong, Lucas? Why so fast? Are you all right, Lucas? 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 Lucas, can you hear me? Henry, we've come to see our niece. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you wait just a moment, please. Aunt Lillian? Oh, Lillian. Oh, dear. 
Uncle Arthur. Come in. Rachel. Oh. And Uncle Arthur. Here, yeah, Lillian's come to talk to you. We'll just, we'll just leave Uncle Arthur here. All right. Oh, it's so good to see you. How have you been? Oh, we've uh, been just, uh, just fine. But I hear you're not. Well, now, who told you that? A man came to see me, a doctor, a Dr. Lucas. Dara, Rachel, he Why did? didn't you call your Aunt Lillian? You know that I'd want to oh, help you. Well, I, I couldn't... Rachel, you've been brooding. I can tell that. What you need is a big bowl of your Aunt Lillian's potato broth. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, you love that potato broth. Now, just sit down. And then we'll have a long talk. But Aunt Lillian, Rachel, don't you think that I know what you've been going through, losing Paul? It's going to take time. It'll take a long time, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to stay here and help you. But Aunt Lillian, you've got your own family to take care of. Not anymore. And you're the same as my own daughter, Nora, to me. You know that. And if Nora needed me, why, I'd be there. And now you're just going to relax. <laughs> I really do need someone. <laughs> I even thought of calling you. But you didn't want to bother. I know. You've always been like that. Sweet Rachel. Always thinking about other people first. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad. My girl. There, there. There, there. Henry will help you with the things. We're moving in? Rachel needs us. Finally. I'd called and been up here several times the last couple of days and haven't been able to reach anyone. The house has been closed for a few days. Why is that? Mrs. Stanton's orders. I'd like to see Mrs. Stanton. Mrs. Stanton is not here. Then I'd like to know where she is. I was with Mrs. Stanton a few nights ago. You remember me. So where is the lady? I'm sorry, sir. I don't have that information. Well, when will she be back? I don't know, sir. Well, she must be coming back soon, otherwise you wouldn't have reopened the house, isn't that right? I, uh... You don't know. Thank you.
Mr. Darrow. Rachel, where have you been? The house has been deserted. I've been up there several times. Oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to worry anyone, but I left the servants off and just went away. Where? Up the coast. I had to get away. Oh, Doctor, it helped me so much. Everything's changed now. It feels so far away, almost as if it never even happened. Then you're feeling all right, huh? And I owe it all to my Aunt Lillian. She took me up the coast, and she's going to stay with me now. It's all different. No more night frights, no pains, no nothing. Rachel, I went to see your aunt. She admitted making that phone call. I, I know about that. It was all a game. Well, I want to tell you what happened. Doctor, I'm afraid that you've been contributing to her self-delusion. I've been teaching Rachel that what the imagination has made, the imagination can unmake. Rachel, I want to talk with you alone. Doctor, I told you that I was going to protect her, and I will. And I think it would be better for Rachel if you don't see her anymore. I think that's up to her. Rachel? I'm sorry, Doctor. Rachel. She said that she was sorry, Doctor. Fly around. Telepathic hypnosis, hmm? That's right. You say the Russians are trying it. Uh, you say you think Lillian Piper's done it, yet you've got no proof. You're the expert in ESP. Why don't you and Carrie try it? We've already tried. And what happened? It didn't work. Well, it just could be possible then that there might not be anything to it, couldn't it? Simon. After six months of therapy, if you can't come up with a reason why a boy kills his mother, does that mean there's no reason? All right. All right. She fired me, too, didn't she? There's plenty of reason for them to keep everybody away. Paul Stanton leaving five million dollars. Well, I guess that's it, then, isn't it? I don't know about either of you two, but I... Don't tell me you're just going to forget about the girl, Simon. What can I do, Lucas? What else can you two do? She's closed us out. <sighs> Lucas, can't a person even get a drink around here anymore? Help yourself. Carrie? No, thanks. She's really got to you, hasn't she, Lucas? She's gotten to both of us, Simon. I guess she's got to me, too. But isn't it possible we've, we've missed the obvious here, and, and everything that's happened to Rachel is a product of her imagination? Except that that uh, it happened to you. You're damn right it happened to me, Simon. There comes a time when you just can't cover everything over with Pat's psychoanalytic theory. I've devoted years to this research. And there's more involved here than anything you've ever read in your textbook, something deadly. And somehow I've got to stop it. Lillian Piper may not be through yet. She just may drive Rachel past the breaking point. I've got to do something. What if you're wrong, Lucas? What if it is just possible that you are wrong? But I'm not wrong. But if you are, and you continue to press Rachel, you could be the one responsible for her complete breakdown.
heavy. No. I'll be out here, mate. I'll be out. Daddy, I'm here. What is it you want? Just want to look at you and talk to you and tell you I love you. I love you, Daddy. I hate this place. I can almost feel Paul here. I can't stay. What do you want? I want you to talk to your mother. I want you to make her listen to reason. Lovely day. No, I, I think I'd rather go alone. Baby, I understand how you feel, and I won't bother you. You don't even have to talk to me. Um, Randy, uh, look, I'm very grateful for everything you've done. Well, you've been marvelous. Really, you have. But uh, I'm beginning to feel like a prisoner. Rachel, I'm only trying to help you. Oh, uh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But you follow me everywhere. And you won't even let me go out alone. Sometimes I think you're trying to keep people from me. Rachel, I am just trying to help you. You must understand that. Rachel, I've got to stay close to you until I am sure that you're out of danger. From what? I don't understand you. First you said it was in my imagination. And now you act as if somebody's trying to kill me. Rachel, it's for your own good. You've got to believe me. Oh, no. No, I don't believe you anymore. Wait, Rachel! about that, Arthur. We'll see. Hello. Dr. Darrell. It's Rachel. Oh, 
doctor. It started all over again. I heard music coming from Paul's study, and when I got here, there was nobody here. And there's nobody in any of the bedrooms. I can't find out Lily and her Uncle Arthur either. Oh, doctor. Could you please come over here? I'll be right there. Rachel. You killed me, Rachel. Inside that house, something happened that almost ended in my death. You've got to believe don't me. You can't that. stay here with me. No, don't say that. I have to think. I have to think, God. Oh, oh. Rachel! 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 Since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of The family will now come forward to pay their last respects. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will Cling to the old rock oh, no. cross <laughs> and exchange it thy way for a cross. The old rugged cross I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Dr. 
Dr. Darrow, since you found the body and were present when uh, Mrs. Stanton made her confession, I'll have to ask you to make yourself available for further questioning. Lieutenant, she retracted the confession, and you know it. Well, that doesn't establish your innocence, Doctor. Mrs. Piper was pushed into that pool. She had a contusion on her head where it struck, and she did drown. And, Doctor, this is the second time around for Mrs. Stanton. We'll be talking. What do you think? Well, you know, in distress, people often confess to crimes they don't commit. Yes, I know. But I also know that Rachel wouldn't be in the situation that she's in if I hadn't pressed her into doing whatever it is she did. What do you want? I want to talk to Rachel. She's not well. Well, where are the servants? Where's Henry? We let them all go. We don't want them around. So you moved in, too? My father needs me. What if he finds the truth out about my... because of what I said. She's here now. Think, Rachel. I... Think, Rachel. Estelle. Estelle. Listen to me. Was Arthur anywhere around that pool? She Mr. wasn't well. She needs professional help. We'll get our own doctor. It's all right, Rachel. It's all right. Well, it seems that you and your daughter have taken over where your wife left off. That might be considered an enviable position. I thought you'd figure certain things out for yourself, doctor, but since you haven't, I guess I'll have to tell you. No, no, it's all right, Nora. It's best that it comes out now. It'll... Help Rachel if the police know why she killed your mother. Lillian was a woman who could talk to the dead. Do you know that? I know she claimed to be a psychic medium. It was true. She had a power inside herself. She had a gift from God. She could talk to the dead. She could talk inside her head to the living. My wife could make people do things, anything she wanted them to do, just by thinking it. Now, you don't believe that. It's possible. She could do it. My wife made Paul stand and jump out a window. My wife tried to drive Rachel out of her mind just so she could control her. So she could control Paul. 
Paul's money. And so you think Rachel killed her? After you told her what Lillian was doing to her, yes, I think she did. Is that what happened, Nora? Yes. I'll be back with Dr. Tyler. Rachel needs his help. You're not to be allowed in this house again. And neither will Dr. Tyler. You're responsible for my wife's death. It's your fault my wife was killed. If you hadn't told Rachel, she might still be alive. You hear me? You're not welcome in this house. Doctor, you, doctor, you are not to come back to this house. I'll be back. So we were right about Lillian. I guess so. You're still worrying about Rachel, though, aren't you? Do you think we should have Tyler try for a court order to put her in the hospital? I think so. Too bad, but we better get an x-ray just to be sure. Make arrangements for that nurse, please. Lucas? Lucas? I'm here, Carrie. You, uh, saw our ghost? It's got to be telepathic hypnosis. There's nothing else. Brainwashing from a distance. Maybe there's another psychic. And maybe Lillian had nothing to do with all this from the beginning. The word poison. If we can assume that the psychic knew the real cause of Lillian's death, you might have accidentally picked it up from his mind while you were in a highly receptive, semi-conscious state. If Lillian was poisoned, the police didn't find that out. I'll bet they never ran any tests for poison. If a toxicological examination was not made, then we'll have the body exhumed and get one. <sighs> That's beautiful, just to explain to the police that a ghost told us that she was poisoned. You did what? I told you I poisoned Lillian Piper. It's a very rare poison called acetamide. If this is some kind of hoax to get Mrs. Stanton off the hook... It would hardly accomplish that if the medical examiner doesn't find poison in Mrs. Piper's body. Well, apparently a mistake was made. Tell me. It seems she was already dying when her body entered the water. Why didn't we know about this before? Well, there didn't seem to be any need for an autopsy. No one requested one. There was water in her lungs, the injury on her head, the other woman had confessed. I have a revised death report made out stating that Lillian Piper died of sanamide poisoning. It wasn't sanamide poisoning, Lieutenant. If you look at the report, it was arsenic poisoning. What was in that bottle I gave you? That was sanamide. But it was traces of arsenic that I found in the body. I got that bottle of sanamide from the university lab this afternoon. I gambled that sanamide was so rare it wouldn't be the one the murderer used. How did you know she was poisoned? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Why would a psychic use poison to kill Lillian Piper? That I don't know. Maybe he couldn't control Lillian psychically. The only thing we know for certain is that we're dealing with a psychic who's using telepathic hypnosis to kill, and we have no protection against it. If we had a power as strong as his... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We've been having you telepathically trying to hypnotize subjects at the lab. What's our conclusion been? I didn't have a strong enough ability. Well, suppose if you telepathically try to hypnotize the psychic, 
And if he or she has strong enough psychic ability, he or she gets what you're sending. Yeah. And Carrie, I'm going to hypnotize you when you try it. I want nothing to interrupt your concentration. And it must be someone that's closely involved, someone that could have poisoned Lillian Piper. That's right. Arthur or Nora. Or Rachel. Prepare yourself, Carrie. When I count to three, you'll be asleep. One, two, three. You hear nothing but my voice. Exactly as I tell you. Your mind is concentrating on the three people. Direct your thoughts to them. Now go to them with your mind and your whole being. out to them, touching them with your thoughts, make them hear you, make them hear.
grab her. You must hold her. A gift from God. Isn't that what you called it, Arthur? But it was Nora's gift, not your wife's. And you corrupted it. I had a right to use it. Nora's my own flesh and blood. I gave her the gift in the first place. I see people all around me getting things with no more effort than Nora, and I've had nothing in my life but disappointment and failure. Nora's my daughter. I have a right to share in her gift. Lillian found out what you were doing, and so you killed her. And then you tried to make it look like Rachel did it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Put the gun down, Arthur. No! Oh, no, please, no more, I can't! Ah! Oh, no! Lucas. Are you all right? Yes, yes, Carrie. Arthur is dead. You're free now, Rachel. Dr. Tyson. 
Tyler will be glad to know that you're all right. Do you think Dr. Tyler might help Nora? I'm sure he'll want to try. <laughs> 